thickly built with chiseled muscles and a strong jaw, pit bulls are powerful and capable of killing. Chicago Alderman Ginger Rugai, who did not respond to interview requests, wants to make sure pit bulls won't attack in Chicago. Rugai has proposed some of the country's strictest breed-specific legislation and wants the Windy City to ban all pit bull-type dogs. Some say that's not fair and want the burden of responsibility taken off the animals and put back onto the owners. Personally, I think it's all on the owner. I mean, any dog can be vicious. It just depends on how you raise it. If the proposed legislation were to pass in Chicago, pit bull owners would have 30 days to dispose of their dogs. Fines for having a pit bull after that range from $100 to $1,000 or up to six months in prison. But there's a problem. Pit bulls are not an official breed. Pit bull is a term used to refer to American Staffordshire Terriers, Staffordshire Bull Terriers, and American Pit Bull Terriers, and sometimes Bull Terriers. The Chicago legislation calls for a ban on all pit bull type dogs. The problem, though, there really is no way to tell if a dog is a pit bull or not. Obedience trainer and dog behaviorist Michael Jaco thinks there's a way. How could you tell a pit bull? It would probably be the first one that comes up to you and licks your face and wags its tail. Others attest to pit bulls' loving temperaments. These pit bulls are just so loving and just they just want to make you happy. Temperament test results show the same. The American Temperament Test Society tests all breeds of dogs and pit bull types are among the highest scorers. 84% of Staffordshire Bull Terriers passed the temperament test. More than 83% of American Bull Terriers and American Staffordshire Terriers pass. And almost 91% of Bull Terriers pass. Better than Border Collies, Chihuahuas, and Dachshunds. And right on pace with, or better than, Golden Retrievers. So why ban pit bulls? The Alabama State Supreme Court has already declared that there's no genetic evidence indicating pit bulls have a higher propensity for aggression than other dogs. So if the dogs aren't the problem, why the attacks? Among the most irresponsible pet owners, dog fighters, pit bulls have become a favorite breed. Owners encourage and positively reinforce aggressive behavior. When America was riled up by Rottweilers and Dobermans, they were the most popular fighting dogs. Dog experts say fighters will find other breeds. And there's been plenty of dogs bred through history who can be um, trained to, to be fighting dogs. And so if I can't have a pit bull, then I'll go and get an XYZ breed. Plus, there is no guarantee breed-specific legislation works. Some experts in Denver, where a pit bull ban was passed in 1989, believe their ban has been a failure. There are more pit bulls in Denver now than before the ban. In 1989, there were 224 registered pit bulls in the city. In 2003, more than 650 were impounded by the city's animal control alone. Even those who are afraid of dogs realize such blanket legislation can be unfair and not work. But I think having a blanket policy for just pit bulls is probably a little bit unfair because not all pit bulls are violent. And if they're trained well and they're well taken care of, you know, there shouldn't be a problem. Research has shown attacks may be preventable. There are factors that make dogs more prone to attack. 25% of all fatal attacks between 1965 and 2001 involved dogs that were chained or tethered. More than 80% of all fatal attacks since 2000 involve dogs that are intact, meaning not spayed or neutered. More than 90% of the dogs involved were male. Okura says chaining your dog increases its frustration. I think that chaining um, um, or keeping a dog penned in a small area can certainly increase his propensity for frustration, which could therefore increase his propensity towards aggression. There are 60,000 pit bulls in Chicago, and with owners reluctant to move out of the city and even more reluctant to have their pets euthanized, people may just let them out on the streets, making the problem worse. Yeah, the problem will definitely get worse because you've got irresponsible owners that have intact males and females that they're going to let go. They're going to have, there's going to be a breeding, there would be a breeding overpopulation. Pit bulls have an interesting history. In the 1920s, they were the most popular family dog in America. Before that, they were used in bull and bear baiting. Now, dog fights. Okura says, don't judge pits too quickly. Everything they've done has been in the service of humans. I mean, pit bulls are probably one of the, you know, uh, the breeds that have kind of run the gamut of what they've been, um, their functionality has been. But it always has been in the service of a human being. So if it's, even if it's bull baiting, it was because there were people who were betting on it. Pit bulls have been fighting for people their entire existence. Now, the tables have turned. 
people must fight for their pit bulls. For all the bullies, I'm John Chirujas, Northwestern News Network.